Okay, now benefits of becoming iconic, whether you become iconic globally, uh, regionally, locally, or micro-iconic. That's a new phrase. I haven't used that one before. Micro-iconic. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, I think we'll make something of that. Uh, wh wherever, whatever scale you seek to become iconic in, those are the benefits. I'm going to use Lazo and I'm going to use Egg as examples of this. Superior sales performance. Since you became iconic in personal training, how's the sales gone? Through the roof. Through the roof. Superior customer retention. Well, it's just a 12-week thing, but I You don't have them. So you wouldn't see that so much. But you might get recommendations. Yep, recommendations. So that's repeat performance. And if you had some other products you're going to offer them, I bet they'd buy you. If you said, take this, this will help, this supplement, whatever, you'd sell that. And an ability to premium price. Did that show up or not? Uh, Just a bit. What did your pricing go from? Uh, it went from uh, 60 to 70 an hour to 10 grand for... 10 grand for 12 weeks. All of those show up in, in what Lazo did, and they will show up if you become iconic. And if I look at all of those for egg, Superior sales performance, five years, business plan in six months. I mean, seriously, that was serious overperformance. That was when we launched. And then when we launched the credit card in 99, uh, internet-only credit card. I remember the FT saying to me, you'll never sell 100,000 of those. Even the big American internet-only credit cards have, not, have struggled to reach 100,000. And we got 500,000 in eight months. Superior sales performance. Customer retention. Egg was extraordinary on customer retention. It was like in the 90%, uh, whereas banks were running at 60 to 70. Um, repeat, upsell and cross-sell performance. Yeah, again, Egg's uh, cross-sell performance was better than any other credit card company. After three years, you don't get that instantly. Cross-sell means I've got a customer, I'll sell them some more stuff. Um, and an ability to premium price. Uh, yeah, the. Um, it didn't so much show up in Egg that, actually, because the pricing was really quite uh, aggressive in the market. Um, but where it actually showed up was it cost us £20 a customer to acquire customers compared to an industry average of 120 So it showed up more there than in the pricing of the product itself. Um, premium pricing actually comes a bit later, normally, once you've built the reputation. But you don't necessarily get all of those with every iconic uh, business, but you get some of them. So the only point I'm trying to make here, this isn't a game. This isn't the colouring in department. This is serious business performance. Really does make a difference. Okay. And I think perhaps the most interesting thing of setting out to change the world is it's a great way to spend your time. I know of nobody who set out to create an iconic business or an iconic social enterprise or change the world in any way that regretted the way they were spending their time. It wasn't a drag, it wasn't a nightmare, it wasn't I gotta just wish I wasn't in this business. It's just a great deal of fun. So high performance and having a good time at the same time. I have to say there's a lot of ways to get high performance, this isn't the only one. This is the only one I know that gets high performance and has a great time at the same time. It's the only one I know that does that. So, uh, what is interesting is, <laughs> guess what, just to bring it back to what this is about, literally every iconic business started that way. Whichever one you think about, it started with a perfect pitch that got people interested, excited and inspired. From the very first day of Apple, what they were pitching was technology doesn't have to be ugly and difficult to use. Um, and by the way, we're going to create the, a, a billion pound company in world record time is what they were basically pitching. They, did, they lost it as fast as they created it, but that's a completely different story. So, uh, Microsoft started with a pitch about putting a, a personal computer on every desk and in every home, got everybody interested and expired, inspired. Um, and Google, you know, when Google started, it was uh, a classic. There was a case I was reading, it was back in the Sunday Times this weekend, bizarrely. There's a guy called Michael Moritz, who's a famous VC in Silicon Valley, works for Sequoia. Um, and he invested $250,000 into uh, Google um, before they had a bank account to pay it into, which was, which was interesting. And what, what enrolled him about them is the guy said, we've downloaded the whole internet onto our PC. Look, we can find all the information in the world in less than a quarter of a second. And um, at that time, you know, the things like Yahoo and all the other search engines were taking five, six, seven seconds to index just a fraction of the internet. So. That started with that perfect pitch and a $250,000 investment. That was quite a smart investment by that guy, I would say. Um, so 
It always starts with that. Now, becoming iconic, so how do we get there? So that's what it is, that's what the benefits are. I said before I'd been working for a while on putting a structure together that let me pass this on to other people. Now, when you do that, you know, you've got to simplify it because simplifying things is, uh, is key to passing them on. I d I've not yet worked out a way to pass on complexity. That's really hard to do. You have to keep things simple when you're passing it on and let the people who are using it develop their own uh, skill with it so they can cope with the complexity as they implement. But the thing itself has to be pretty simple. So what do we do? We've got to change the world, remember? First thing about becoming iconic, 